This is an extra video on rhizopus reproduction. Rhizopus is a type of fungus and it's mostly associated with bread mould. However, we do know that it grows on particular types of fruit. You'll often see it growing on tomatoes and on strawberries, for example, when they're decaying or going off. It looks like this white furry stuff and this is because many hypha, these tube-like filaments, will form a mycelium. Rhizopus is saprophytic. This means that it feeds off dead organic matter. Therefore, it acts as a decomposer and decomposers are really important in returning nutrients to the soil you remember from ecology. Most of the time, rhizopus reproduces asexually by means of sporulation, so producing spores. To understand reproduction in the rhizopus, you need to know its structure. We know that it's a fungus and it's made up of these tube-like filaments known as hypha, there are three types of hypha which you have to know very well. So the first type of hypha that we talk about are the rhizoids and you can see them here in the picture. I always remember them because I think of them as roots even though they're not but I just say or for rhizoids or for roots. Their main role is anchorage. They're there to anchor the fungus but they also play a very important role in digestion, extracellular digestion because they secrete those digestive enzymes which are going to break down the substrate and then the nutrients are absorbed back in through the rhizoids. The next type of hypha is a stolon. It grows above the substrate and it creeps along horizontally. Its main role is in helping the fungus to spread. The final type of hypha is known as a sporangiophore. It grows vertically upwards into the air. So this sporangiophore, which is filled with many haploid nuclei, develops a swelling near the end, which fills with many more haploid nuclei and cytoplasm. And these are all formed by means of mitosis. A cross wall called the columella forms, and this is formed to block off or to separate all of these nuclei and the cytoplasm in the swollen tip from the rest of the hypha. And just below the columella is the apex Apophysis, which is this swelling of the hypha. Above the columella forms this structure known as the sporangium and it's here that those haploid nuclei together with some cytoplasm are now going to become those haploid spores. Eventually the sporangium splits and releases all of these haploid spores and if they land on a suitable substrate well then they will germinate to form a new hypha. Rhizopus will mostly reproduce asexually by means of sporulation producing spores. However, under adverse conditions such as dehydration, sexual reproduction takes place. Sexual reproduction occurs in hypha which look very similar but are chemically different. So one is a plus strain and the other is a minus strain. Swellings begin to grow between the plus and the minus strain as if they're growing towards each other. And into these swellings on both sides flow many haploid nuclei and this now forms progametangia. After this, cross walls form, essentially blocking in those nuclei and forming these structures known as gametangia. And supporting the gametangia are the suspensors. The wall between the gametangia dissolves, allowing both the cytoplasm and the haploid nuclei from both sides, both strains, to mix. Eventually what happens are many fertilizations so forming many diploid zygote nuclei. These diploid zygote nuclei get encased in a tough walled zygospore and this can remain dormant for quite a long time. Eventually it will germinate by meiosis. So when the zygospore germinates and undergoes meiosis, a haploid hypha emerges and this hypha is filled with many haploid nuclei which in turn can become haploid spores. The spores released are haploid, but they are genetically different. Meiosis has introduced genetic variation. This video was only about rhizopus. Remember that we covered the asexual and sexual reproduction of this fungus. We learned that it's a saprophytic fungus, meaning that it feeds on dead organic matter. We also learned that it's economically not that great. Why? Because it causes food spoilage. So the very best of luck with your exams. Make sure you're using your textbook, you're doing past papers and you're listening to your teacher's guidance. Good luck.